Pokemon's Demon. Hi there my friends, um, been threatening to do this for an awful long time, um, basically since we got the system. Have tried to film it a few times, but the end results were pretty naff and I wasn't willing to put it up because it didn't give a good representation of the game. So we're going to try again for an Empire of the Dead bat rep. We're using the scenario of Jack the Ripper versus Holmes and Watson, where the Ripper has to harvest four um, sets of organs from four separate victims. So we need some protagonists, so we're going to need 10 civilians that we have here. And these will randomly move around the board. We obviously need a Ripper. And we need a Holmes and Watson. On top of that, we also need three members of the local constabulary, the Fuzz. Better known in Victorian times as Peelers. So that's the protagonists. It's supposed to be played on a 4x4 table. We don't really have much room in here to set up a 4x4. So what we've got is a 4x2.5. One of the things that's held me back from getting this game set up and videoed is I really wanted a proper thematic board set in the streets of Glasgow or London or some sort of Victorian town. But I've not yet got all the scenery made and I don't have a board to represent all the cobbled streets. So we're going to go with what we've got and I want to show you the game in play. Right then folks, to start the game off, first of all deploy your scenery, we've done the terrain first just to speed the game up, and then what you're supposed to do is taking your centre point in the board, which is this tower, um, it's as close as damn the centre on our board, you need to start deploying your civilians. The civilians must be within 15 inches of the centre of your board, but not within 4 inches of each other. You're supposed to take in alternate turns, so that it's a bit of an even distribution, but just to help you see how it goes in the bat rep, we're just getting the real Hellboy to start firing them out. So it's first person deploys is the Ripper, then it should be the Holmes faction that deploys and back and forward until all 10 civilians have been deployed. So we now have our 10 civilians randomly placed throughout the board, taking it in turns, we take one uh, peeler for the Ripper, then a peeler for Holmes and Watson, and the final peeler deployed by the Ripper. This time we are got to be within 15 inches again of the centre, but the peelers themselves are not allowed to be within 10 inches of each other. So we have peeler 1. I'll put peeler 2 over here. Really what you want to do is try and get a chance of getting a peeler somewhere near the Ripper. It depends on which side the Ripper then chooses to set up on. Now the Ripper deploys, choosing any table edge. We choose the long table edges just because of the way the board's been set out. And within six inches of that table edge. Once he's deployed, Holmes and Watson can also deploy within six inches of the opposite table edge. So I'm just going to deploy these guys over here and I'll move them to the six inches maximum out, but that's the edge they're going to be on. So there are four phases to the game. The first phase is the maintenance phase. This is completed simultaneously by both players. This is where we can invoke any unusual occurrences, such as the special powers that cost influence points. Both sides start with three influence points in this scenario, so the Ripper has three influence points, and between them, Holmes and Watson have three influence points. If we use the powers, we'll explain them at that point. We also roll for recovery for any models that are downed. We can check to see if the Ripper's won the game, or if Holmes and Watson's won the game, and we move the public. So before any of our characters even move, we move the public. The way we do this is we have a template that we can see here. Ripper's deployed over here, so we point the one here towards the Ripper's table edge. Roll our d10 and move the public, their maximum move distance, which is four inches in the direction indicated to simulate the public randomly moving around the table. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back. So, 
the public have all randomly moved and it's done the Ripper no favours because the people who were closest to him have wandered away from him. It's night time, the range of sight is 18 inches and I'm going to use immediately on turn 1 my um, unusual occurrence. My unusual occurrence is elementary, my dear Watson. Now that allows me to move up to my maximum move out with my action phase because I have guessed where the Ripper's going to be and it's just going to get me closer and into combat sooner, hopefully. So, Holmes has moved up the board his maximum of 8 inches. Watson was within 4 inches of Holmes which allowed him to also share in the unusual occurrence and move his maximum move but that is only 6 inches because his move is 3, Holmes is his 4 they can move double the rate when they're running if they're not going to perform any other actions but because poor old Watson took a leg wound in the war he's got a bit of a gammy leg and a bit of limp so he can move 1 inch less than Holmes but they have both moved up the board their maximum distance Hellboy has declared in turn 1 that he's also going to use his unusual occurrence which costs him 2 influence points leaving us both only with 1 influence point each Rumours and Gossip allows Jack the Ripper to deploy 12 inches from where he is anywhere on the board because he's been leaving false rumours and gossip so that the police and Holmes and Watson think he's in a different area of the board so he'll move his 12 inches as well right at the start back and try and give you the overview of the board everybody has moved before the game has even started both factions have used their arcane powers already taking the Ripper from here all the way up to these poor unsuspecting potential victims of the man and his dog Holmes and Watson have slid up to here and are trying to close in on their quarry now the game will start by rolling for initiative because that was just the maintenance phase. We're rolling for initiative now and highest initiative goes. You just knocked my nine away you little cheat and he only rolled a two. So the Ripper being the deceitful swine that he is smashed my dice out the way and left me with a one. So I've got lowest initiative which means the Ripper goes first. So because of his positioning, the Ripper has decided that he's going to charge into combat with the man and try and take him out. Because he's charging, he gets a plus two to his attack roll. So because Jack's attacking, he'll roll first. He has attack three, so he gets to roll three dice, takes the highest result and adds a two. Ten being the highest result you can get naturally, you can't take your dice roll above ten. So he's rolled a ten, so he wins the combat. We're now going to roll and see if he wounds. So now we need to roll to see if the Ripper actually wounds his victim. It's the strength of the Ripper versus the fortitude of his victim. He rolled a 6. The Ripper has strength 4 against a fortitude of 2 of his victim, which means he needed a 3 plus to cause the wound. So he's caused the wound. So he now needs to roll again to see what the wound is. And he's rolled a 5 which means that the model is down but not yet out for the count so we need a little down on this model so we know so as the ripper had the initiative the player with the initiative gets to move the peelers until they become activated by discovering a victim or being within six inches of a combat happening or being attacked themselves so the Ripper being clever will move the peelers as far away from him as possible which they can move up to their maximum standard walking distance which is 4 inches so they'll all get moved round the board now so as the last actions of turn 1 I am going to be able to move Holmes and Watson who can each move the respective distances either at a walk and then take an action or run their full distance I'm going to run them up closer just to see if we can get them into combat with the Ripper sooner and try and save some members of the public. So they'll both move up the board in this direction their maximum distance which will be 6 inches and 8 inches. So that's the end of turn 1 and we're about to start moving on to turn 2. No kills yet but there is a downed civilian round here 
whom I'm sure the Ripper will try and take every chance he can of taking him out quickly. Start of turn two, various things need to happen. We need to check for victory. Has the Ripper won? No, he hasn't harvested the organs of four people. Has Holmes and Watson won? No, it's turn two and we haven't reached turn ten. We need to roll recovery for any downed model. So the Ripper will roll recovery for this one and see what happens. We rolled a three, which means he is no longer down, but discombobulated. If he was down, all he could have did was crawl away. Now he's discombobulated, which will change the ruling slightly and make it harder again for the Ripper to kill him on this turn. It would have been an easy one just for the Ripper to walk up and stick a knife in him when he was down, but he's no longer down. We can then invoke any unusual occurrences, but we have both spent two of our three influence points, so we don't have any other influences that we can do, so we're now moving on to rolling for initiative. So, nine. so the Ripper is going to take advantage of this poor civilian who's discombobulated and roll into attack and roll his defence but he gets a minus two to his roll because he's discombobulated so despite the fact that I rolled a nine and his highest roll was an eight he still loses the combat because that's modified to seven. So we now need to roll strength versus fortitude and see if a wound is caused. And it's strength four versus fortitude two meaning it's a three up. And he rolled a four, so a wound's caused, so now he need to roll to see which that wound is. Ten. Dead. Removed from play. So, they'll be removed from play, and a victim marker is going to get put in by the Ripper, where the dead person was. What do you know? It was a man in a dress! Jeez! Cross-dressing Victorians! So the alarm's not been raised because the peelers haven't discovered the dead body. They're not within six inches of the combat, which means they're still under control of the person with the initiative, which means, unfortunately for Holmes and Watson, the peelers are still under the control of the Ripper. So they're getting moved further away from the Ripper, obviously. And we'll show you the board set up in a second. So the peelers almost couldn't be further away now from the Ripper, which is going to leave Holmes and Watson some trouble unless they start getting some initiatives to bring these guys in a bit closer, and he's blocked them from line of sight from what's going on at the minute. So it's now up to Holmes and Watson to take their part of the turn. Okay, slight faux pas there. At the start of the turn, we forgot to move the public. It's not made any difference yet, because the Ripper didn't move and engaged in combat with the person he was already in combat with. Holmes and Watson haven't moved yet, so we haven't messed it up too heavily because it wouldn't have changed anything where we're at, so we're going to get the public move. We put the one facing the board edge where the Ripper deployed, and then we roll our D10 and move the public their four inches. So we're going to move all the public now, we won't do it in camera so we don't bore you. So unfortunately for Holmes and Watson, that big butch dude with his dog let off a OW! HELP ME! HELP ME! as he was stabbed to death and just about every civilian on the board has somehow <laughs> randomly gravitated towards the screams of HELP ME! HELP ME! and has put Holmes and Watson in an even more struggling position. So as we were slightly out of order there the Ripper is going to use his arcane power which is Mesmerise where he can pull a victim in any direction he chooses against his role the roll is calculated of his arcane value, subtract the arcane value of the victim, so it's 6 minus 2, which is 4. He then needs to score a modified 8, so a 4 up was all he needed, and he got a 7. So he's going to use his mesmerised power against this poor dude here and drag him 4 inches in any direction he wants, and guess where that's going to be. You can drag them into combat if you wish, if they're within the 4 inches, but they won't hurt you back should you fail your attack. And... Would that be within four inches? Yeah, it would. A normal attack roll, it's three attack dice for the Ripper and one for the victim. I get an eight, but he get a nine, so he wins the combat. So we're going to get a quick roll here. Again, strength versus fortitude. Strength of the Ripper is... Strength of the Ripper. Four. 
Strength of the Ripper is 4, against a Fortitude of 2 it means a 3 up is what's needed and he got his 3 so he now needs to roll to see what the wound effect is. And he got a 10! So the old codger decided oh what's the noise and then was mesmerised and was killed by the Ripper and oh my god he's also in a dress! What's going on in these Victorian streets? All the men are wearing dresses! But that's the end of turn two nearly with Holmes and Watson still to go and the Ripper's already cultivated two out of his four required organs. Um, I might be heading towards the biggest ass whooping I've ever had in this game and it would have to be the one I've managed to get on camera. So if we look we have line of sight from Watson and just line of sight from Holmes to the Ripper. Watson's going to take an aimed shot because the Ripper has been in line of sight for the entire turn and his range is 11 inches which puts him in medium range I think yeah puts him in medium range so we'll get an opposed roll to see if we hit so Watsman's marksmanship is 5 because it's an aim shot he gets a plus 2 at his roll and as previously 10s is what it takes to hit and we rolled a 1 so despite aiming despite the fact there's a flurry of activity going on over here with two victims getting their organs harvested Watson aims, shoots and misses. Very deflating. Holmes isn't going to take an aim shot though. He's going to move up four inches and then take a shot. So we'll move him up his four inches, which puts him up here. And from there we'll take a shot, but it's not going to be an aimed one. So we are now for Holmes five inches, which puts him in short range. And being in short range, you get a plus one to your modifier. So again, we need a 10, or a 10 modified. We've got a 4, we have a marksmanship of 4, so that's giving us 8, and a plus 1 gives us a 9, and it's a miss. Not very good marksmen these two today, are they? So that's the end of the turn, and we're going to go on to turn 3. So it's back to rolling for initiative. And I've got a 3, 7 to the Ripper. Ripper has initiative again. This could be all over very quickly. So, Ripper gets to do whatever he's doing. So the Ripper's going to use one action point to try and mesmerise this poor dude. And pull him in and try and do him over. So it's Arcane, 6 versus Arcane, 2, which means it's a 4. Needs to roll an 8, so he needs a 4 plus. And it's a 2, he fails! So, and he fails. Used one action point, the Ripper had one left, so he's moved his four inches away from his previous two victims, and now the Ripper's in control of the peeler, so he'll be moving them next. Guess where they're going? Yep, further away from them again. So we'll come back to them shortly. So the peelers have moved, and they're further away again from poor old Holmes and Watson and the Ripper and the victims. In fact, they're heading for the corners of the table. And now we've got Holmes and Watson to go. And I'm going to have to try and get these guys up closer to the Ripper because he's getting away from them. So they're just going to move up their distance and try and engage in combat next turn. So I decided to move Watson up his 6 inches so he ran as far as he could. I've only moved Holmes 4 inches because he's going to take a pot shot at the Ripper and try and take one of his wounds off him. Range wise, I'm 5 inches. Putting me in short range for my pistol with Holmes, giving me a plus 1 to my roll. I have a marksmanship of 4, giving me 5, so I need 5 up to hit, because I need a 10 in total. And it's a 3. Hellboys wished me not to get what I needed, and after taking a shot, shoots the cape of the Ripper and misses. So that's the end of this phase. We now move on to turn 4. If we get to turn 10, don't forget that I win. But the way things are going, the odds are stacked heavily against... Turn 4, start of the maintenance phase, check for Ripper's victory. Does he have 4 kills? No, he has 2 kills. Are we at turn 10? No we aren't, so Holmes and Watson haven't won. Roll recovery for any downed models, there are no downed models, just 2 dead ones. Invoke any unusual occurrences, we can't invoke any unusual occurrences because we don't have enough influence points left to do that. Then we need to move the public. 
So we'll move the public round the board and see if they all gravitate yet again to the sound of the victims and the hmm, what's that happening over there scenario that seems to be going on. Well, would you credit it, Holmes and Watson's caught a break and every member of the public has sort of caught a whiff of what's going on over here and every one of them has disappeared in the opposite direction. Quite literally, the opposite direction from where it could be for where that ripper is. Every one of them this turn has taken the opportunity. So we've caught a small break here. Let's see if we can capitalise on it by taking initiative as well. One. Eight. Nope. Initiative goes to the ripper again. Bomber. So Jack's movement rate is four, which can give him a maximum run of eight, which means he can charge. So he's within seven, which means Hellboy's charging that poor guy over there. So it's rolls again. One dice for me, three for him. He's got a plus two because he charged, giving him an eight. Two, five, six. So highest is an eight. Six. So he wins the combat. So it's an opposed roll. Strength versus fortitude. Strength of what? Hellboy? Four. Four versus fortitude two, so it's a three up to wound. One! <laughs> he takes, he swings, he stabs, and he doesn't cause a wound. Darn! All he does is nick the guy's hat. So I'm going to move both these guys up their walk distance and take a shot with them. As far as game rolls go, you do one at a time, just to make it easier on the camera. I'm going to move both up and then do the roll separately. But it would be complete everything for him, then complete everything for him. But just for the ease of the camera, that's what we'll do. So Holmes is going to take a shot at uh, Jack. He's eight inches away, so that puts him in medium range. He's not aiming, so there's no modifiers. His marksmanship is four, so we need a six up to hit. Two! So it's a miss. We are 12 and a half inches for Watson away from the Ripper. And because he's using a rifle, that puts him in long range, which means we have a minus one modifier. With a marksmanship of five, he also needs a six up. One. Okay, my dice rolls have totally deserted me. So that's the end of the turn. We're now moving on to five. Start a turn five, five to go, halfway there and only half of them dead. Maybe I do have a chance after all, we'll need to wait and see. So maybe you're getting used to this by now but we're on the maintenance phase. It's completed simultaneously by both players, check for victory. Nope, Jack's not won because there's only two dead. Have we won? Nope, we haven't reached turn 10 of this scenario. Invoke any unusual occurrences. We don't have enough influences left because we started with three. We've used two each on those initial influences that we used to try and get ourselves closer to each other. Move the public. So are the public going to stay where they are? Are they going to get closer? What are we going to see happening? This dude here doesn't move because he's already locked in combat. So the public have all moved and Holmes and Watson's caught a break again because MD it really mattered that could have been close to the Ripper have all wandered off in the wrong directions for him. Those that were far away, yes, some of them came a bit closer back towards his side of the board, but they're that far away, it might not make a difference now. Still in with a fighting chance here. So it's roll for initiative. Can we yet steal initiative? Turn five. That's an eight. That's a two. Initiative falls to Holmes and Watson for the first time in the game. Again, as explained in the last shot, it should be taking each character and doing them individually, but just for the ease of doing it on the camera, I moved Holmes up four inches, moved Watson up three inches, each of them used one action point, so they've still got one left, and they're both going to take a pot shot at the Ripper. This time round, though, we're going to have short range and medium range, I think. So, four inches. Oh, that helps if I'm filming the right bit. Four inches there, and we have nine inches, which means it's definitely short range for Holmes, and it's medium range for Watson. So, rolling for Holmes first. We have a 2, which means we have a marksmanship of 4, so that's 6. Short range gave me a plus 1, 7. It's a fail, didn't get a 10. <laughs> and Watson's taking his shot. 4, at medium range, so no modifier. And a marksmanship of 5 means it's a 9. It's another miss. So they both take shots. 
but shoot through the cloak of the Ripper's Ripper. locked in combat with this poor fella here. Ripper gets his three dice, the public gets his one, and it's a ten to hit. Take the highest dice as before that the combat gets. And it's a ten, it's a draw. What does that mean? That means it goes to the person with the highest combat value. Uh oh, that means the Ripper still wins. So despite doing well and despite swinging back with his stick, the knife still makes a plunge and now the Ripper needs to roll to see if he actually causes a wound. Fortitude versus Strength, which as we've learned is a 3 up. Oh, and, and he rolled a 2! And he's spending his last influence point, which makes it a 3. Because you can modify your dice by one with an influence point. So he does hit, he does wound. Let's roll to see what this wound is. Roll a one. Hee <laughs> hee! Rolled a two, so he's discombobulated. It will help him for the next turn. If he wounds. Well, we need to wait and see. So we're now entering turn six. Peelers! Oh! oh. Yeah, peelers. We forgot to move the peelers. He's still in control. No, who was in control? I won initiative, yeah, didn't I? And I've passed my turn and I forgot to move the peelers. Oh, bummer. So despite forgetting to move the peelers, Hellboy was very nice and allowed me to move them. Not at this stage of the game it's going to make any difference because they're so far away from the action that I don't think I could get these guys here for another 15 turns. Well, I could if you do the math, but... We'll see. So, it's now moving the public and all the rest of the jazz that we need to do in the maintenance phase. So let's check for victory first. Two dead. No more dead, but we do have a discombobulated fellow over here, making it easier come the combat phase for the Ripper to hit him. Is there anyone down? No, there isn't, so we don't need to roll for the down models. We do need to um, then move the public. So that's what we're going to do next, is move the public and see if they get closer, if they get further away, or what they're going to do. Do our rolls for any down models, discombobulated, you automatically recover at the start of the next maintenance phase. So he's recovered. He would have staggered two inches, um, had he been discombobulated and still been able to move, but he couldn't because he'd already done his previous movement in the other maintenance phase. So it's now roll for initiative at the start of turn six. Nine. Can I get it? Four. My initiative falls to Holmes and Watson once again. Maybe the tides are turning because the rest of the public down here all wandered in directions that really weren't that beneficial. So before I forget, I'm going to move my peelers and then I'm going to start with my Holmes and Watson. I'm going to take an aim shot with Holmes, which gives me a plus two to my roll. I am, what distance? Four and a half. Which puts me in short range. So, 10, that's a hit. Without worrying about any of my modifiers. So the strength of my pistol is 4. Fortitude of the Ripper, because he's a bloody mean machine, is 5. Meaning I need on the table a 6 up to cause a wound. 7! It's a wound. Ripper has 3 wounds though, so... We don't need to roll on the table to see what happens, we just take a wound off him, leaving him two wounds. So Watson's going to take an aimed shot as well. We are 10 inches away, putting him in medium range for his rifle because it's got a range of 6 to 12. We got a plus 2 for our aimed shot, he's a marksmanship of 5, taking him to 7 meaning he needs a 3 up to hit. 2! He still misses! Despite having the long rifle, despite having all the benefits, Holmes' shot must have hit the Ripper and because of that his body flinched and Watson misses. So we're locked in combat here with the Ripper and this old get in the brown coat. Brown coats unite! And obviously it's still fighting along. Nine, two, he beats him. So it's strength versus fortitude. Strength of the Ripper is what? Four. Fortitude two, three ups is what we're looking at then. Four, so that's a wound, so we need to roll to see what the wound is. Five, he's down. Yes. I'll find a down market and put that on him. 
So that's the end of the turn, he's down, we're now moving on to turn 7. Three turns to go, one wound on the ripper, two dead on the table, it's a tight game, it looked like it was going to go all the ripper's way at the very start, but the public have all helped me out now in the later turns. So first thing we need to do is check for victory, two dead, so no he doesn't win. What do we need to do next in the maintenance phase? MD remember? MD remember? Yeah. yeah, what we need to do is roll for the down model and see what happens. So, Ripper's going to roll and see what happens on the wound table. And it's a 9! So he's dead, so removed from play, so he'd done enough damage to him at the end of the last oh, turn. Yeah. Holy moly, it's a woman again! Another woman! What are all these Victorians up to? Oh, cross-dressing people, my goodness me! And it looks like they might actually do a bit of a job in that sort of dress wear as well. Hmm. At least the brown coat's still wearing his brown coat. So now we need to move the public and see what happens there. So all the public's moved. Um, some of them have done some favours to the Ripper by coming closer and some have done some less of a favour by wandering off. We now need to roll for initiative. I am desperate to snag initiative here because I reckon that I could get that peeler within six inches of those dead bodies if I snag initiative, which means the peelers would come under my control for the rest of the game. I could actually start running them rather than just walking them randomly around the bait the game. So let's roll for initiative and let's see what we get. Five! One! No. Initiative falls to Sherlock and Watson again. We might have a chance here. Raise the alarm! Raise the alarm! Yep, that's right. I got my four inch move for that peeler. He's within six inches of the victims. The peelers are all blowing their whistles. <whistles> we needed Mithril to do some whistling there because I can't whistle to save myself. But it means I've got control of the peelers so I can move them at their maximum move rate and maybe draw them up into combat as well with the Ripper. And we're on the start of turn seven and things are heating up. You can tell I'm blonde. We have a proper Victorian police whistle in the house, which was a heirloom of the family, and I forgot it was there. So Mithril's going to demonstrate the noise you should have heard there as the peelers became active. So that's what the police are hearing, and that's them all active, and they've moved up. So move this peeler up, he's eight inches, and he's closing in. Move this peeler, he's eight inches, and I'm going to get my other four inches move and bring him up as well. So I'm closing in. The game is definitely afoot, boys. The game's afoot. Right, Holmes is still in short range, so he gets his plus one roll for that. He's getting a plus two to his roll for aiming. So that's plus three to the roll. He has a marksmanship, if anybody can remember, of four, taking him to seven. So it's three ups is what we need here. One. So despite all the excitement, despite everything going on, he takes an aim shot and the police whistles distract him. Oh no! I'm going to move Watson up four. He's three inches though and bring him into short range as well, but he won't get his aim shot this turn. So Watson's close to within six inches of the Ripper. In fact, the entire board's closing in. They're trying to get him. Puts him in short range. Doesn't get to aim this time, so it's just a plus one to his roll. And we roll a three, which gives us four, plus a marksmanship of five. Means we don't hit again, lads, because we needed a 10. So they both try and shoot, they both miss, and the Ripper's now onto his movement. What? So the Ripper's decided as the game's afoot, he's got nothing to lose now and he's going to charge this peeler. So Ripper gets three dice because he's got an attack of three. The poor old peeler still only has an attack of one, so he gets one dice to roll, and we're looking for tens to see who wins. Three, ten. Combat goes to the Ripper, so now we've got a Fortitude versus Strength roll. Fortitude of my poor old Peeler is 3. Strength of the Ripper? 4. Is 4. So that's 4 versus 3, means that it's 4 ups, and he gets a charge, so he gets a plus 2 to his roll. 1! Causes no wound, and he's now locked in combat with the pigs! Turn 7 over, we're moving on to turn 8, game is getting in its final stages, what's going to happen here? So what do we do? We check to see has the Ripper won? We have one victim, two victims, three victims, not yet four, so the, vic the Ripper hasn't won. Turn 8 means that we haven't won either. Is there any downed or discombobulated players in the maintenance phase that need anything done to them? No there isn't. So can we invoke any unusual occurrences? Three points have been spent by the Ripper, so he has no points left. I still have a sneaky point left that I might be able to use, if I remember. So now we need to roll for 
moving the public. So we're going to do that and we'll take it from there. So all the public have moved around the board. Those that mattered moved away. Hearing the disturbance, hearing the police whistles going. Those that don't matter are curious as to what's going on and they've headed up the board to see what our liquor fuffle's about. So now it's roll for initiative again. Nine! Ho ho ho! Ten. He's a little cheat, he smashes my dice any chance he can get. Rules below, what should we do to him? Should we allow him to keep them? Or should we take him outside and hang him by his toenails? You choose. So the Ripper's locked in combat with the Peeler here. So three dice versus one dice. No bonuses to the roll. I've got an eight, a two, a two, and a nine. So combat goes to the Ripper. So it's an opposed roll. Can anybody remember? Strength versus fortitude. That's right. So fortitude of the Peeler is... Three. Strength of the Ripper. Four. Four. So that's fours. No! He fails again! The police training's coming to the fore and he swings back out the way and he misses! Ah. So I've brought the peelers up trying to close in on combat because they are now fully under my control. We're in turn eight still. So this peeler's ran his eight inches. This other peeler's ran his eight inches. He may well get a chance to get into combat next turn. We have Holmes and Watson standing there, both taking aim shots. So the first one is going to take a shot. We're going to go with Watson. He's in short range, so that's a plus two to his roll. It's with... Uh, no, it's not. It's a plus one to his roll because he's in short range. He's taking an aim shot, which is a plus two, which means he's got a total of plus three. But this time round, a bit of cover because of the wall. Because the base is obscured from his line of sight, making it a minus one. So in total, he's got a plus two to his roll. With a marksmanship of five, meaning he's got to roll three up. Five! It's a hit. So now we need to roll to see the damage. So strength for pistol for Watson. Fortitude five for the Ripper, meaning I need a six up to cause a wound. Four. Seven! So he causes a wound. So that's another wound onto the Ripper, meaning he's down to his last wound. If he gets wounded again, we start rolling on the table. But that's two wounds now, out of his three. So we're now going to go with Watson. I would say that base is visible, looking at that along the camera lens. So is he still in short range? I think he is. Just in short range. So it's an aimed shot, which is plus two, short range, he's got a plus one. He though has a lower marksmanship than Watson because his marksmanship's four. So that's a seven, so he needs three up to hit. Five, it's a hit. Again, we know we're rolling on sixes because it's still strength four. So let's see, does he cause a wound? Three, no wound. We now can resolve combat with this peeler. Unfortunately, he's only got one dice. And we've got three dice for... Five, two, six. six. So combat's won by the Ripper. Let's roll and see what happens. We have a fortitude of three. Strength four. Strength four, meaning it's four ups. Eight. Uh oh, he's caused a wound. Now he needs to roll to see what that wound is. Is he going to win the game here? I hope not. Five. He's down, but he's not out. Policeman's down. Now it's my turn. Okay. Now it's the Ripper. I said it was the Ripper, but it wasn't. That was the end of the turn. So we're now on to turn nine. And we need to check, see where we're at. We have three victims. We have a downed victim. That poor policeman there. So we need to roll because he's downed and see what happens here. Is he going to be get better, or is he going to stay the same, or is he going to die? It's a five. He's no longer down. He's merely discombobulated. So the Ripper hasn't won just yet. So he'll stagger our way two inches no, now. No, he's down. Oh, I was wrong. I read the table wrong. He's still down. He's not discombobulated. He's still down. He's still down. Lucky hell, boys, keep an eye on me. So now we need to move the public, so we'll move them, and then we'll roll for initiative. So maintenance phase over of turn 9, all the public have moved. This time round the public have gravitated towards to see what's happening. And there's a policeman in a fight with some guy in a mask and a hat and a knife! And he looks like he's in trouble. 
because he is, he's down, which means that if the Ripper wins combat, you'll automatically hit, which means he'll have won the game. I need to try and take initiative here. Three. Three. It's locked combat. Initiative went to the Ripper last time. Because of that, it means I get initiative, because if your initiative rolls are the same, the person who did not get initiative last time gains the initiative. We have a chance here still. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my aim shot with Watson. Same scenario as the last time, no one's moved, so we know it's short range. We know it's an aim shot, so that's a plus one, then a plus two, but because of the obscured base, it's a minus one in my roll. Which means I've got a total of a plus two on a marksmanship of five, giving me seven, so I need three ups to hit. It's a five, it's a hit, so we need to roll to wound. Strength four for my weapon, fortitude five for the ripper. So that strength four versus fortitude five means we need six ups to wound. It's a nine! It's a wound! Which means now, because he's down to his last wound, we need to roll on the wound table to see what happens to the Ripper. Nine! Dead! Removed from play! No! Guess what, lads? <laughs> the Ripper's dressed as a bird as well! Victory falls to Holmes and Watson, despite a very shaky start. Thanks for watching. Hope this gave a really good overview of the basic rules, there's an awful lot more you can do with this game, but hopefully this gave you an overview for the rules of Empire of the Dead. So it's thanks from me, and it's thanks from Hellboy. Thanks. And hope you enjoyed it. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye. <laughs>